All right. Time to answer the age-old question for 2022. Should you use React or Svelte for your next project? To find the best match, we're going to explore how each of these work by building out a project in each of them and exploring their programming mindsets, like do they focus on HTML and CSS backgrounds or programmer backgrounds? And then we'll look at some of their out-of-the-box features to understand what they can do for you so that you can make the right choice. It's best to get our hands started when trying new tools. So let's try building a joke generator using both React and Svelte to compare how they feel to use. So I have an example pulled up in the StackBlitz editor, which is a great online editor to follow along at home with their templates. And to render what you're seeing off to the side, I've created a JavaScript file called app that's exporting a function that renders some HTML. This is immediately why I call React more programmer-centric, where your entire app is built using JavaScript functions that return some HTML using JSX templating to write things like divs and paragraphs inside of a JavaScript file. And then those components can call on other functions in your app. Like here, I'm calling on the make me laugh function that's in a separate file, and I'm passing it the argument of name with the value of Ben. And if we jump in here, we see it's another function that takes a name as an argument, and it can render that HTML in the return statement. Here, I can use some curlies to insert my name so I see a joke just for Ben. This is an important functional programming principle, React follows a lot of those principles, where anytime you call a function, you're going to get the same predictable output. It's a pure function. So when I pass in name, I'm going to get the section with my name rendered out, which is very easy to unit test, for example. I can call this function and see what result that I get. And I can ensure that that test is going to run the same every single time. So from here, let's add some impurities, like state that can change over time. For that, I'm going to call on React's global helper called React use state. This is telling React this is something that could change over time, so keep track of it in a store and give us a setter so that you know whenever you need to rerun this function. So tracing what's going on here, when we call make me laugh, we're going to register joke as a state variable, and we're going to return some markup with the name and a placeholder value for joke, which is let me think of something here. And then when we call on set joke, like when we click on our button, it's going to tell React, hey, something changed inside of this HTML. You need to rerun the make me laugh function to see what new HTML to show on the page. So React's going to rerun make me laugh. It's going to see the new joke that has been stored, and it's going to render the HTML with that new joke. So this, again, is very predictable. If I mock the use state hook, I can predict what's going to be rendered when I'm using a testing library. And the second functional programming concept to go over is side effects or anything that doesn't need to be run right away, needs to run asynchronously and update our app later. Here I've added a use effect to our function, which is making a fetch call to the dad joke API to give us a terrible joke to show on our page. So again, tracing what happens when we call make me laugh, it's going to register joke as a state variable, and it's going to register this event that needs to fire sometime later. So React's going to put this in its store, put it off to the side, and return that placeholder that we need to show on the page. And then sometime later, it's going to run this in the background. It's going to result in a set joke call, which remember is a flag to React that we need to rerun the make me laugh function to see what new HTML to show. So it's going to re-execute make me laugh. It's going to see the new joke that was stored in there. And it's not going to run this use effect again. That's because it's only going to register the fetch event whenever the name changes. And my name is still Ben through this whole thing. So it's going to skip over this block and jump straight down to the returned HTML. So again, we did a lot of function tracing to understand what React renders and why. And that's why React is definitely a framework that's putting the power in the programmer's hands. If you have a functional programming understanding, you can predict what's going to happen in your React application. Now let's try building the same app using Svelte. I have a Svelte REPL pulled up here, which is a recommended online editor for sandboxing ideas. Again, you can check out one of their templates. And here, you'll immediately notice that we're not using JavaScript functions anymore. We're using .svelte files, which are basically HTML with some added superpowers. So here, we've created a header element at the base of our file this time, hello world, and we've imported a component that we can use the same way we did our make me laugh react component, where we call upon it, we pass in an argument of name, and instead of this being a function, it's a template that renders out the section element right here, and a script tag at the top for Svelte to keep track of variables in our application. Here I've exported this variable so it's visible as an argument, and I've set it to initial value of just empty. 
And if I want to insert the value of that name into our markup, we can insert it using curlies as we had before, a joke just for Ben. So immediately we see we're not using any functional programming principles here. It might be a bit harder to unit test. We're going to need to mock some things out. But it was a bit quicker to get up and running, especially if we're not super familiar with JavaScript principles like functional programming and side effects and state variables, as we'll see in a moment. So if I want to add a state variable to this app, I can add another variable inside of my script tag, and I don't need to register it with a helper like React use state. Since Svelte is compiling this script, it's smart enough to keep track of any variables inside of that script. So here it's keeping track of joke, and anytime I set it, like in this click event, I can use an equal sign. And Svelte's going to see, oh, the value updated, so I'll re-render anything that depended on joke, like this paragraph tag. So when I click on this event, it's going to add that new value, and we don't need to trace what function calls are getting run and when. Svelte is handling for us in the background, so we don't need to worry about performance, for example. And if we want to add a fetch call, all we need to do is add the fetch call to the base of our script. So if I paste that in here, we don't need a side effect or anything like that. We can call the fetch call at the top of the script, and we set the joke equal to the result of that API call. So again, some things are certainly magic here, like re-rendering whenever joke changes, but it is that magic that lets you ship a lot faster and also be a little more comfortable if you don't have a JavaScript background up front. And the second thing I want to mention is all of the first-party helpers that Svelte gives you out of the box. For instance, in React, you have to import some third-party libraries to write styles just for your components. Like if I wanted to style just the button inside of here and no other buttons in my app, in Svelte, all I have to do is add a style tag and insert a button class here. And I can style that button, say background blue and color yellow, and I magically see that update. But if we inspect, we'll see that Svelte is applying a class to this button. That's so we're only styling buttons that are scoped to the component that we're editing. So it'll only style the buttons in here to a background of blue and a color of yellow using this selector. So this is one of many helpers that Svelte gives you out of the box. I encourage you to check out their walkthrough tutorials on their REPL to explore all of these features from start to finish, including transitions in order to add fades and slides, et cetera, that might be really hard to edit using a third-party React library. Let's summarize what we learned here. When we explored React, we saw that it was JavaScript first, where it's best for programmers that understand a functional programming mindset. That speaks to its predictability, since every function you write is considered pure by default, and side effects are pushed off using the use effect hook. And this also speaks to its testability. You can call a function and assert the result is what you expect. Then when we explored Svelte, we saw that it was more HTML and CSS first. If you come from a templating background, you might appreciate just writing out that nav tag instead of wrapping it in a function. And it's batteries included. It gives you helpers for styles, transitions, and more, which React pushes off to third-party libraries that you have to learn. And all that speaks to its simplicity. It's hiding that scary JavaScript state management so that you can get to the good stuff. So everyone's going to come to their own conclusions looking at this list, but I'm hoping these points of comparison will help you find the best match.